On November 25th, 2020, Elon Musk's SpaceX launched 60 Starlink satellites on board Falcon 9 into Earth's lower orbit. The Falcon 9 is a reusable satellite launcher and this was its seventh successful mission as it returned back to Earth after the launch. If that's amazing, the 60 new satellites now are part of almost a thousand strong mega constellation of Starlink satellites already orbiting the Earth. The eventual tally is going to be a staggering 12,000 satellites. Put together, this mega constellation is expected to provide high speed, low latency internet connectivity. While SpaceX has the largest planned capacity of LEO or low earth orbit satellites, it does have competition. Jeff Bezos foray into space, Kuiper system pla- plans to launch 3200 plus satellites in the coming years. Another company, OneWeb, which is a joint holding between Sunil Mittal's Bharti Global and the UK government intends to have 648 satellites in space out of which 74 are already in orbit OneWeb intends to roll out services in early 2022 whereas SpaceX has already rolled out beta internet services via satellite connectivity of its Starlink satellites in certain parts of the USA Telesat a Canadian Geo stationary fleet operator is going to launch 298 LEO internet satellites by 2023. The low earth orbit is about to get crowded and this connected mega constellation will provide high speed internet to every square inch of earth. But let's take a step back and see how this works. So how does satellite internet work? In simple terms, your computer sends a signal through your modem to your satellite dish this dish also called as a very small aperture terminal or vsat or even user terminal your vsat transmits the signal request to a provider's orbiting satellite the satellite upon receiving this signal sends it to the ground station satcom hub this ground station hub is essentially a large dish antenna constantly tracking the satellite the hub is also connected to the internet the hub upon receiving the signal from the satellite sends the data packets to the satellite which the satellite in turn transmits back to the user's vsat terminal and there forward on to the computer of the user other types of internet are cable and fiber networks which are essentially connected to physical infrastructure on earth think your home broadband and 4g network so what's new in satellite internet communication previously these networks were made via geosynchronous satellites these orbit almost 40000 km from earth's surface isro itself has about 15 such satellites orbiting above india which can provide such services However, these are wide beam technologies designed to provide broader coverage. This comes at the cost of low internet speeds and high latency. The signals have to travel a considerable distance and hence the high latency. What SpaceX, Amazon, OneWeb and Telesat are launching are LEO satellites or low earth orbit satellites. LEO satellites orbit the Earth at a distance of 340 to 2000 kilometers. These are high throughput satellites or HTS. Essentially, they differ from wide beam or geosynchronous satellites such that they provide narrow coverage but very high internet speeds and low latency. Owing to the narrow coverage range, thousands of these satellites are being launched. They will all network to create this mega constellation. to provide internet to every part of the globe will this replace ground based systems such as cable and fiber it is unlikely however at remote places such as hills and rural locations laying ground infrastructure for small pockets of population becomes unviable this is how satcom will connect everyone on earth to the internet besides it has utility in in-flight internet and marine internet this space is set to have disruptive growth in the coming decade 
In India, VSAT CUG licenses are issued by the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India of the Department of Telecommunication. Only a handful of licenses are granted by the TRAI and notable names are Usenet, Bharti Airtel, Nelco and Reliance Jio. Of this, Use Bharti merge entity has about 60 to 65% of the market share and Nelco has 24% of the share. Besides the trial license, all the satellite usage has to be procured from Antrix Corporation Limited, which is a department of space entity. Antrix uses ISRO geosynchronous satellites or even other satellites it is networked to, which provide satcom services to ground services such as Nelco. The satellite internet space or satcom space within India is underpenetrated but has tremendous potential. Use Bharti do provide some high speed services and recently Nelco has tied up with Air Vistara to be the first in India to provide in flight internet. However, majority of the VSAT based services are using geo satellites and hence speeds are relatively slow and there is high latency. With HTS technology soon becoming available, and the government of india's digital india project in full swing satellite internet is expected to provide a boost in areas such as online learning telemedicine logistics power management remote banking services and many more these are set to benefit especially the remote locations more than any others spacex is currently a standalone player oneweb is bharti global owned and nelco has tied up with Telesat Leo to provide satellite connectivity in India. There is tight regulation in this space which restricts competition. The current market size of satellite internet equipment and services in India is rupees 1000 crore. This number is expected to go way up much like the rockets which propel and facilitate this technology. There is a significant chance that Nelco which is a Tata Group company and a hidden gem will be a benefactor of the exploding satellite internet space the company is a major b2b satcom service provider in india delivering vsat based services and infrastructure to remote locations for business critical applications nelco possesses impressive ground infrastructure boasting of the largest antenna in the subcontinent multiple satcom hubs technology aided monitoring and service support and the highest connection reliability in the market Company has two subsidiaries Tatanet Services Limited and Nelco Network Products Limited. Currently Tatanet Services Limited holds the VSAT COG license. Going forward Tatanet will amalgamate with Nelco the holding company and the VSAT business will be under Nelco. NNPL on the other hand will look after sale and maintenance of VSAT and related equipment and a small but promising segment of integrated security and surveillance solutions. There are four main VSAT license holders in India. Due to license being a moat, these operators from diverse backgrounds compete in the satcom and IFMC space. This industry is currently growing at 8% per annum. Nelco's market share has improved from 19% in 2015 to 24% currently. The main competitor is Huge Bharti. At present, HTS technology in India is only just coming in and is expected to proliferate in the next 1 to 2 years. Even ISRO is planning to launch its own HTS satellites very soon. This availability of low cost high speed low latency internet is going to open up a plethora of new opportunities for satcom providers such as connected cars, telemedicine and so many more. Nelco says that they are rapidly gearing up for this to occur. One thing is certain, the satcom industry growth is likely to go way upwards from the current 8% and it is certain to benefit the existing suppliers. Nelco is poised to be a huge beneficiary of this but let's not count our chickens before they hatch and let's check out the company share price and financials as on recording of this video the market cap of nelco is 477 crores and the share trades at rupees 208 per share covid has put a bit of handbrake to business in terms of new visa deployments the company has still managed to post consistent revenues but profits declined due to fixed cost and capital intensive nature of the business Tata Power holds 50.1% of the stake 
and almost the rest of the stake is significantly held by retail investors. So there is no major institutional holding in the company. Looking at the last 10 year income statement, it paints a picture of inconsistency. Things in the last 3-4 years however seem to be positive. This can happen in a business where technology evolves quickly and it can get difficult to have a sustained business model. With regards to fixed investments, Nelco has increased net block threefold from 37 crore in 2010 to 117 crore in 2020. A bulk of this growth is owing to giving VSAT terminals to users on a leased based model. This is perhaps also the reason that revenues were consistent despite the pandemic. The net asset turnover of the company has fluctuated wildly between 2.1 and 6.3. This number should normalize as the leasing business model evolves. Now let's talk about capital allocation. A lot of the capex of the company has been debt funded as significant infrastructure investments are needed. The current debt to equity ratio is 1.8. It was 5.4 in 2016. The interest coverage ratio currently is a tad bit below 3. However, the company has never defaulted and enjoys a healthy credit rating. As the promoter here is the Tata Group which has a long standing reputation of reliability, this isn't much of a worry to have. On the operational capital front, the company has a working capital cycle of an average of 52 days over the last 5 years. The company's cash flow from operations to PAT ratio is well above 1. This, in this indicates that cash flows are converted into profits. Finally, on the profitability front, the company's operating profit margins have consistently been about 20%. However, net profit margins have fluctuated wildly owing to various reasons such as provisions for tax disputes, erratic sales, debt fluctuations, etc. Things seem to be taking shape for Nelco since the last 5 years and it has shown greater consistency in performance. The average ROE and ROCE over this period have been an impressive 28% and 20% respectively. There is a lot to be excited about Nelco. The SATCOM space looks like it is set up for disruption. 1000 crore market today could grow multifold in a very short period of time. Nelco has shown responsiveness to technology changes and could be a future gainer of this phenomenon. Its trial licenses and the markets being tightly regulated acts as a moat as threat of new entrants is nil, at least till the government chooses it to be so. Parentage of the Tata Group helps the company to build a credible brand and also navigate choppy business environment. The Digital India Initiative and the vision of the Indian government ensure that internet connectivity becomes a basic right for all Indians plays an important factor in the company's favor. However, not everything is rosy. There are quite a lot of hurdles that the company has to cross. Firstly, on the historical front, the 10-year financial performance is not a delight to the eyes. The main theme of Nelco's performance has been inconsistency. As things were just starting to seem consistent, the pandemic has decelerated progress. Another threat is the monopolistic tendencies of disruptive technologies. Think of Amazon, Google, Facebook, etc. They are all monopolies and devour any competition with little difficulty. Use Bharti OneWeb seems at the moment to be better suited to act swiftly and benefit from the HTS movement. Will this too be a new technology where the first mover with deepest pockets like SpaceX take home the entire pie? Only time will tell. So finally on the verdict. If you believe strongly enough that SATCOM space in India is underpenetrated and poised for disruption, then Nelco may be your best bet. Airtel and Jio are other listed options, but their core telecommunications business is so large as compared to SATCOM, it may hardly impact the share price. However, as 98% of Nelco's business is SATCOM related, any disruption in the space will directly impact the company. However, it is best to keep an eye on the regulatory environment and other developments in technology if you are already invested or plan to do so. At the current stage, investing is majorly speculative, so stay out if you are risk averse. Finally, on the ratings end, we give a 2.5 out of 5 to the business because it has been inconsistent, but a 5 on 5 to the valuations based on a quick DCF that we ran and 5 on 5 to the promoters of the company. Thanks for watching.